All right, here we are. This is Miss Brightwater. I'm going to do Earth Science in 10 minutes. Why in 10 minutes, do you ask? Well, in 10 minutes, that's all I can put up on YouTube at one time. So we're going to do it in 10 minutes, and we're going to try to cover Earth's interior, Earth's surface, and climate and, and weather, get as many basic concepts down as we can. Now, most of the diagrams and pictures I use are going to come from Prentice Hall Physical Science Concepts in Action, because this is the textbook that we use at school, so these are the diagrams and pictures that I have access to. Um, rather than trying to get permission from everybody else on the web. So here we go. Let's start with Earth's interior with the three main layers of, of, uh, of Earth's insides. We're going to start with the crust. We've got the mantle coming next and then the core. Now the core actually has, we usually identify it with two pieces, the outer core and the inner core. Now the reason why we call them both the core is because they're at the center and they're both made mostly of iron. Now the outer core is liquid. It's so hot that it's liquid, it's melted iron. And the center is actually still hot, but because of so much stuff on the outside, the pressure is high enough that it's also a solid. Okay. The next layer up will be the mantle. The mantle isn't really a liquid. It's, it's not necessarily a hard solid either. It's more kind of like taffy in a lot of places, you know, where it's kind of soft, kind of hard, but still a solid. And the mantle is, is that type of thing. And then on the outside, we've got the crust. There's actually two different types of crust. You've got the continental crust, which is usually this 5 to, to 75 kilometers deep. And you've got the oceanic crust, which is usually only about 7 kilometers deep. So it's much, much thinner. All right, we're going to go on now. So now we're going to go on to the, the rock cycle. Now we've got different types of rocks, three main types, right? You've got the igneous, which is made by, uh, made from magma, which is hardened. That's what you see here. It can also melt back into magma. The, uh, the igneous rock, if it is weathered down or eroded, it turns into sediment, little pieces, and then those little pieces in turn can be cemented together and compacted. And when that happens, it becomes sedimentary rock. Now the sedimentary rock in turn can weather and erode back to sediment, or it can have a chemical change which could be caused by temperature or pressure or reactions with other things, and then it turns into metamorphic rock. The same thing can happen to the igneous rock. It can go through those chemical changes. Note it's also a purple arrow and it can turn into metamorphic as well. The metamorphic in turn can be weathered or eroded into sediment or it can melt back to lava. And so through this cycle it keeps on going and they keep changing from one type to another. Now these changes take many, many years, but this is basically what's happening. Okay, we're going to talk about plate boundaries. First, we've got a divergent boundary, which is what's happening right here with two plates separating. This is due to the theory of plate tectonics. We've got two plates separating at the mid-oceanic ridge. At this point, since it's separating, the magma is actually going to flow up, and it's going to create new crust here. Okay. Now, separately, we have right here a boundary that is a converging boundary, because you've got the two plates coming towards each other. Now, at this place, this crust is going to go down below, and we're actually going to get some crust that's being destroyed. It's going to get deeper and deeper, and eventually it's going to melt. And so you're going to lose some crust there. All right. Now, a secondary thing happening here is because the crust is coming together, then you're going to get some folding here, right? And so because of the stress, it's going to cause mountains to form because that crust is going to bend up and fold. You can see a fairly good example of this here in that there's some folds, right? Because the mountain's getting pressed, the, the crust is getting pressed and therefore folding and creating the mountain. Next, I want to talk a little bit about volcanoes. Volcanoes have two different types of eruptions. They can have a very violent eruption or they can have a relatively quiet eruption. Now what's the difference? Why, is, why, why does it erupt violently in some cases and quietly in others? Well the answer to that is that it depends on the magma. It depends on the viscosity of the magma. Viscosity. Apparently I'm not an English teacher. I don't know how to spell, but viscosity. If it has a low viscosity, that means it flows very well like water. Okay, it's like if you try to make a saliva bubble with your mouth. You make that bubble and it pops and it, it's not very loud, right? Because the saliva is so thin, so liquidy that it doesn't, it's not very explosive. If you were to chew bubble gum on the other hand, bubble gum is very viscous. It's very thick. Viscous things is, it would be like bubble gum or toothpaste, you know, that, those thick, thicker liquids. And you know when you pop a bubble of bubble gum, it makes a louder pop, just like a 
volcano that has more viscous liquid will have a louder explosion. Now, if it's, if it's low viscous, then it'll flow out slowly and you'll get what we call a shield volcano. If it's, um, if it's very explosive, then you'll get uh, one of the other types where you're going to have some cinder and ash. A cinder cone is where it's explosive, but there's mostly just uh, cinder and ash there. And then if you get both lava and cinder and ash, you'll get a composite volcano, and that's when you get the really nice big volcanoes uh, because you've got cinder and ash and you've got the explosive lava coming out. And uh, so that's what's going to cause the different types of volcanoes. I want to go on now to Earth's surface. So now we're going to look at the water cycle. All right. Now it's important to know that most of Earth's fresh water is in the glaciers. Okay, now often we wonder, well, where is most of the liquid fresh water? And that's actually in the groundwater. It's not in lakes or rivers, but it's actually in the ground here. Okay, it's been dissolved into the rocks or the, or the dirt. Sorry, not dissolved, but it's, it's in there mixed around with the dirt and the, the rocks and that type of thing. Now, in the water cycle, obviously, the water rains down or snows as precipitation. It can snow into a glacier. Okay, it can run down the, the hills, the rivers, the mountains. Now it can evaporate, which is what happens if it goes directly from the water. Okay, it can also transpire. That's things breathing, like when we breathe, our breath has moisture in it, right? And so that's transpiration. The plants breathe as well. They breathe out some moisture, and so that comes from here. When it evaporates or transpires, it condenses up in the air, which we're going to talk a little bit about later with the formation of clouds. And then once it's, it's condensed, then it moves along and it will precipitate again. All right. And so that's, that's the basics of the water cycle. Now we're going to go on and talk about land formations. Here we've got a river. Now a river, as it goes through a, a mountain, is going to create a V-shaped valley. You can see that right up here at the top. It creates a V-shaped valley because the water's running really fast and it's cutting through like a knife. Now, that's you know, it, it's not really cutting very fast. It's still a very slow process. However, it is cutting through and, and uh, will make a very sharp cut there. The water will flow down. Now, in some places, we get something that we call a meander. Now, a meander is because as you go around the river, the water going around the inside doesn't have as far to flow as the water going around the outside. So the water around the outside is going to flow faster. Now, if it's flowing faster, it's going to cause more erosion around the outside, and so the outside of the river is going to move in that direction. Now, on the inside, since the water's moving slower, it's actually going to deposit some of the sediment, which means that it's actually going to get bigger, and so the side is going to also move in that direction, and so slowly the river moves farther out, and the bend gets wider and wider and wider. All right? Now, here at the end, again, the water is spreading out, so it has a chance to slow down. And as it slows down, it's going to deposit some sediment. And that sediment is going to create what we call a delta. Now, if it's deposited in the water, it's a delta. If it's deposited on top of land, then it's called an alluvial fan. All right?